Welcome back, everyone. In this video, we will be continuing our discussion of object types by diving into strings. This is the last part for this lesson, but it's also the longest, so I encourage you to take a break if you need. Um, a string is an object that contains text information. You can create them using single quotes, shown here, or double quotes, shown here. You just need a beginning and an end quote. Uh, you do need the same kind of quote on the beginning and the end. Notice here that I tried to create a string starting with a single quote and ending with a double quote, and you end up with this syntax error. You also do need both quotes. Uh, so here I, I start a string and I never complete it by having an end quote. Uh, and again, that gives me a syntax error. Numbers can be strings too, but you can't do math with them. Uh, so here I create a string with the number 32 inside of it. And then when I try to subtract two from it, I actually get this type error, which just means that this object type or a string can't be operated in the, uh, on in this way. So it can't be subtracted from. Uh, there are two specific operations that can be used on strings, which are addition and multiplication. So when you add strings together or concatenate them, it creates one string from the different strings that you're adding together. So here we have hello, world, and then a space between the quotes here. And when you concatenate them or add them together, you get hello space world. Now, when you multiply strings, uh, it, it duplicates it and puts the repetitions together. So in this example, I have the string hello, and I multiply it by four. So the final string is hello, 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 right? Notice that because the original string didn't have a space in it, there are no spaces in the final string. If the original string did have a space in it, the final string would also have spaces. There are certain characters that in order to put them into a string, you have to put an additional escape sequence or a backslash. Uh, we're going to go over some of the types that we're going to see most commonly in this class. Uh, so if you want to put a backslash into your string, you actually need to put two backslashes. And that's because if you put just one, it's going to interpret it as trying to do an escape sequence and there will be an error. Um, if you want to do quotes inside of your string, you also need to uh, use a backslash. So here, if you want to do uh, a, a double quote, you use a, a backslash and a double quote. If you want to do a single quote, use a backslash and a single quote. Uh, doing this escape sequence can be avoided with the quotes if you use a different quote than the, uh, what you use to identify your string. Right, so here I identify my string with a single quote, and then I can use double quotes inside without a problem. Uh, again, if I identify my string with double quotes, I can use single quotes inside without a problem. However, if I want to use single quotes inside of single quotes, as shown here, that's when you need that escape sequence backslash. Uh, same thing with double quotes inside of double quotes, you need the escape, escape sequence. This is because if you don't have it, Python just thinks you're trying to end your string if you put a quote in. Uh, so it'll, it'll throw an error by trying to continue on with more string. So a string can contain any number of characters as long as there are quotes around it, right? Which means that can, a string can be completely empty, uh, which is shown here, right? It's just two quotes, nothing in between them. It doesn't print anything, but it is still a string because it has a beginning and an end quote. Uh, strings can also be long, right? So here we have uh, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. It has every uh, letter in the alphabet, right? Uh, which means that strings actually have dimension. They have a length, um, which means we can do some kind of cool operations, one of which is using the length function, or len, uh, to find out how many characters are in string. So here we have our test string. Uh, in order to use this length function, we do len parentheses of our test string variable here, and that'll print out the number of characters that are in this string, which in this case is 45. No, notice that spaces are counted as characters, and so are punctuation. So let's talk a little bit more about how Python is actually counting these characters. Python assigns index to each character in a string starting with zero, right? So here we have our string Python is fun, exclamation, and it starts to assign these index values of zero, one, two, three, four, all the way up to 13, right? Because it starts at zero, that means that there are 14 characters in this string. You can select parts of the string by calling on the character's index number. 
So if you want to select just an individual number, uh, you use your string variable name, which in this case is just string, and then you use square brackets and you put in the index number of the character you want. So in this case, if we want the zero index character, right, we do string, square bracket, zero, and square bracket. Uh, and then this gives us the capital P of Python here. If you want to select multiple characters or what's known as a slice, you put in a range of index values, right? So here we start with the first index value of the character we want, which in this case is 10 or F of fun. And then we go up to 13, right? So the reason that when you do this 10 through 13, it gives you fun, but it doesn't give you the exclamation is because the way that Python slices is to take the first index and up to, but not including the last index here, right? So that's why we get fun because it's 10, 11, 12, up to 13, but not including. If you want to select the whole string, you can simply type the, the variable name string, or you can do the variable name square brackets with a single colon inside, and, uh, and that'll give you the, um, the full string. So here's an example using, uh, using a string. Here we're given the scientific name for the humpback whale, which is Megaterra novianglie. Uh, and you can see that it's split into the genus and the species, right? So if we want to just select out the genus name, well, we do a slice, right? So the slice starts with the zero index because it's the first character here. So we start with our zero index and we get, count the letters that we want. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those are all the letters we want. And remember, we have to go one further than the last letter we want, so nine. So if we slice zero to nine, that will give us Megaterra, which is exactly what we get. If you want just the species name, we do the same thing, where we start with the first letter that we want, 10 here, and we count up to the last letter that we want and go one further, which in this case is 22. But because it's the end of the string, we can do a little shortcut where we can just do 10 colon and then leave that part blank. And Python assumes that you wanna go up to the end of the string. So it's the same thing as writing 10 up to 22, but it just means that you don't necessarily have to count the number of uh, letters in the full string. This can be really helpful for, for long strings, especially. So now if we wanna just get the first letter of the genus and the species and give it sort of initials, right? We do genus of zero, right? which in this case is capital M, and we do species of zero, which if we look at our slice is the first character is 10, which means it's 10 of this original string, which is N, right? So we have M and N. So now if you wanna check if a certain character is inside of a string, you can use the membership operators, uh, in and not in. Uh, so using this little cartoon here to, to describe it, if you were to ask if the doctor was in, in this top panel here, uh, the answer would be true, right? Because Lucy is there. If you were to ask if the doctor is not in, in this top panel, the answer would be false. On the bottom panel, the opposite is true. If you were to ask if the doctor is in, the answer would be false. If you were to ask if the doctor is not in, the, the answer would be true, right? Just like we've seen in our cartoon here, you can test if a certain character is in a string using in or not in, and it will return these booleans, true or false. For example, say we're gonna get the name of a compound as a string, right? But we don't know what it is just yet. We can still create a few tests uh, based on our sort of knowledge of what we think a compound might have in it uh, in order to tell us what its composition is. So first, if we assume that the character is S-U-L-F or sulf is in the compound, that this compound might have sulfur in it, right? Next, if we assume that the character is P-H-O-S or phos is in this compound, we will assume that the compound has phosphorus in it. Finally, if we assume that the string does not have C-A-R-B or carb, this compound does not have carbon in it. So this means that we can perform this on some unknown compound string 
and we can still have information about it without actually ever knowing what the compound is. Uh, so in this case, we guess that the, the compound does have sulfur in it because the, the string does have sulf. Uh, it does not have phosphorus in it because it does not have, because phos is not in the compound. And we also guess that it does not have carbon in it because carb is not in the compound. And that's a true, right? When we do actually see the compound here of dimethyl sulfonylpropanate, uh, or DMSP, which is commonly found in marine phytoplankton and seaweeds, uh, we see that we were right to say there was sulfur, and we were right to say that there was not phosphorus, but we were wrong that there was no carbon in this compound. And that really emphasizes that a lot of these tests are only as good as the parameters you set. So you have to really know how things are going to present themselves or some of the, the different options that might not uh, uh, appear exactly the way you think it will. So there are a number of other things you can do with strings. Uh, this table here shows uh, a, a sample of the functions that you can use to change and quantify different strings. Um, you've already learned the length function, which was the, the function and then parentheses around the string variable name. Uh, this one is a little bit different where you have the function. Uh, in order to do these functions, you have your string variable name you put a dot, you put the function name, and then you end with parentheses. And then inside of these parentheses, you can oftentimes customize the arguments in order to, to, to make it what you do what you want to do. Right? So going through these, uh, using this first function here removes the characters from the left side of the string. And the default removal character, meaning if you don't put anything inside of these parentheses, you're going to just remove spaces. So here you have our, we have our string. Uh, my string is equal to lots of spaces, apples and bananas. And we're very excited about apples and bananas, it seems. So we have my string is equal to my string, so your string variable name, dot L strip, which is to remove characters from the left side of the string. And then we don't put anything inside, so it just removes all of those spaces. So the result here is the quote is right up against apples now, and then it goes all the way on. R strip or right strip is very similar to L strip except it removes characters from the right side of the string. So here we have my string dot R strip, and this time we're arguing that we want to remove exclamation points instead of spaces. So if we put this in here, it will remove all of those exclamation points, and now we just have apples and bananas, no punctuation. The next two functions change the case of, of the characters in the string. So this one makes all of the letters in the string uppercase. Uh, and then this one makes all of the strings in the, uh, the letters in the string lowercase, right? So here we capitalize the whole string. We have my string dot upper and in parentheses, you don't need to give it any arguments and it will do it. It will capitalize all of the characters in the string. Same thing with lower. We have my string dot lower and it will again, make every character lowercase. This is really important for Python because it is case sensitive. So it's nice to be able to change those things and make it all match in order to, to compare and contrast things as needed. Uh, so this count function here counts the number of times a given character is in a string, right? So in this case, we use my string lows, which is the lower case of this, this edited string. And we do dot count. And we're counting the number of times the letter A is inside of this string, right? Notice that this is lowercase. And because all of these are lowercase, it's going to count all of those. If it was uppercase, it wouldn't count any of them because Python is case sensitive. So you do my string lows dot count the letter A. And notice that it occurs five times. And let's count them. One, two, three, four. So it occurs five times in this string. Uh, finally, we have the replace function. Uh, this replaces a given character with uh, a different character, right? So we give it my string lows, which is apples and bananas here, dot replace. We're going to replace all of the A's with O's, right? And notice how that's structured, where we put the thing that we want replaced first followed by the thing that we want to replace it with, correct? 
So now we have replacing all the A's, all five A's uh, in my string glows with, uh, with O's. And we get Opal's owned Bononos, right? Um, this is absolutely not everything that can be done with strings, but these are the most commonly used. We're going to continue working with functions like this, with arguments and, and with the, the dots and things like that, um, as well as all of the string operations. For now, that's all for this lesson. Uh, I'll leave you with the resources I used to create this lecture. A lot of these are sort of the oceanography relevant examples um, that, that I went through. So thank you for joining me. Uh, I'll see you all in class and take care.